In 2021, an article on Ars Technica by Matt Paprocki explored an unreleased Atari game titled Playland. At the time of its creation in 1983, graphics technology was improving rapidly, but still lagged behind other entertainment mediums, which makes Playland an interesting title to look at. When Cinematronic's Dragon's Lair arcade title landed in arcades in 1983, it wowed players and audiences alike. The game was powered by a video laserdisc format, which was used to play animated graphics leagues ahead of other games on the market. But while the graphics were impressive, the actual gameplay was quite limited. With the Laserdisc only capable of playing pre-recorded animations, player inputs would only act to queue up the next animation, either moving the story ahead or, perhaps more likely, ending progression in an instant. Despite its limitations, other companies, including Atari, explored how they might be able to use the technology in an era where titles struggled to find the levels of success that past arcade games did. One such game was Atari's Playland, a title in which there isn't much known about its development. Paprocki interviewed Richard Taylor, who directed the video content of the game. Unlike the animated cartoon of Dragon's Lair, Taylor used miniatures to tell its story, moving from a killer clown's dressing room, the entrance of an amusement park, and a ride selection screen, which would have allowed multiple game types. Taylor noted that the gameplay would have involved ghosts floating on the screen for players to shoot. Despite the filmed elements being delivered to Atari, nothing was ever seen of the game, other than the footage that Taylor himself uploaded. A first look at the Atari coin-op division corporate records here at the Strong, largely paper documents, didn't yield any results. While many of Atari's classic games are well documented, Playland is not one of those. But with less than one minute of game footage out there, I didn't want to stop there. Working with our archivist Julia Novakovic, we were able to identify two U-Matic videotapes along with one beta tape that were labeled Playland. Using the Library and Archives digitization station, I sat down to digitize the two U-Matic tapes, hoping to see something new. The result was around five minutes of footage, which while some of it overlaps with the Taylor video, it isn't identical. Along with the Atari coin-op division corporate records, there is a set of digital files. While past exploration of the data has revealed documents, source code, and game builds, my expectations for finding Playland content was fairly low given the lack of documentation. But there was a single folder that was clearly related to the game, and it was source code. The source code gives some context as to what the game may have been had it been completed, and some of the people that worked on the game. One of the primary developers seemed to have been Peter Lipson. Lipson worked on some of my personal favorite Atari games, namely Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which we will come back to. I reached out to Peter, who was kind enough to spend some time talking with me about his time on Atari, and what he could recall of the Playland project keeping in mind that the project was only in development for a short time in 1983 and into 1984. So, how did the project get started and how might it have played? If I recall, that was when uh, programmable optical disks were starting to become a potential thing. And I think we did Firefox with probably a variant of the technology that we were going to use for that. There was a uh, a laser disc game that was in the in the arcades where it was just press the button at the right time. Uh, the the action I can't remember the guy running around having little adventures. Um, so what the intent was to uh, get some kind of um, control data on a track on that audio disc that we could read in, and the one I remember faintly was a roller coaster game where we would do you know the roller coaster going through all that and then we'd have control information so that we could sync up the the video generated one but realistically it was never got too far beyond the the talking stage peter noted that he was still quite new to atari at the time the game was being worked on no in 83 i'd only been there a couple of years so this was probably right after fire beast um, and before Indiana Jones. Some of the code makes references to the arcade game Star Wars Return of the Jedi. So, because that's generally how a lot of that stuff would work. We'd just grab a PC board from one of the games that are in development or, or even better that was in production 
and then hack it up with wire wrap. Playland would seemingly be controlled by a joystick with two possible action buttons per player. The hardware had the ability to go to the next frame of animation or jump to a specific frame, which likely would have been how the Laserdisc video was queued per play. One document indicates that the Laserdisc would be controlled through its serial interface using a Pioneer player with modifications by the late Eric Durfee. The code is commented well, but it can be difficult to truly understand what the code's intent was, especially given how early the code is and how incomplete the surviving repository is. Much of this set of code, created for a teddy bear wheel attraction, deals with tracking a ball which could bounce, complete with a shadow. The ball would disappear when it collides with another object. The ball could bounce over one to four slats in this minigame. The code notes that there was a need to implement a score multiplier for continuous bounces, at least giving some idea for how one of the game mechanics would have worked. That would be the idea then, is that the ball, we'd have to be flipping in the, the right sprite all the time to make the ball look like it was animating. Some of the code allows players to use the joystick to control a ball as a cursor, which could theoretically be used for a menu or as a function for debugging the game. There is some code for a map attraction as well that gives some information for how the game would function. This attraction has information about player tracking, and specifically how the jester may track the player along with its count for juggling. The game would log what attraction was chosen, and even what should be chosen, seemingly for instances where the player had run out of time to choose their next minigame, along with whether an attraction was reached and the amount of lives the player had. Comments indicate that Lipson's final version of code was created on December 16th, 1983, with revision 4.0 wrapping things up for the next programmer, indicating that he was ending his work on the project. And it would seem that nobody else would pick up on his work on Playland. So we got as far as having a little discussion with the guys at PDI, uh, what we might want to do. Um, I don't think it was ever my full-time gig to work on it, frankly. And, and I just you know took some stabs at at how this would work, you know, how you could stream this stuff off, how we could manage to encrypt the data in like the V-blank interval or whatever. And it just, the technical difficulties just were kind of daunting. Uh, and the cost was high enough that we really never progressed very far. That isn't to say that there wasn't a lot of promise with the game despite the challenges. Oh yeah, it sounded like it would be an awesome game. You know, we just, we, there are so many ideas you can spin around a thing like this and this whole imagery is so spooky. Also, it probably doesn't read the same to people these days to see this, because this video quality is something that you could do in the Unreal Engine with like zero problem, right? <laughs> and in those days, we were talking Super Mario level, you know, no one could do anything like this. Unfortunately, that is the extent of the Playland material here at the Strong. Playland wouldn't be the end of Laserdisc technology at Atari, as a pair of eventual System 1 games were initially planned to use Laserdiscs. So yeah, so we had pitched um, doing some kind of different games built around that, that optical technology. Uh, another one that we almost did um, was the Roadrunner game that Ed Log ended up doing. Uh, and I was going to do an Indiana Jones version, you know, game two with uh, the minecart chase. Um, but all of those things, we realized that the video footage was just ridiculously expensive. And uh, when I talked to the guys at ILM um, about the footage we would want, you know, they were pointing out that they did like three minutes for the mine chase, <laughs> chase scene in the movie. And we wanted like 40 minutes for a, a laser disc. So we did not have 15 times the budget of the movie to, to do, so that kind of killed it pretty much right away. Hopefully we learn more about the Playland project in the future. Thank you to Peter Lipson for chatting with me about this long lost project. It is always such a pleasure to hear directly from the people who are at Atari making such innovative titles. And until next time, thanks for watching.